Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Rajan. And today, on behalf of Kixo, my company, I'm going to present one of our flagship products, a machine learning platform for sensor data. For those uh, who don't know Kixo, we are currently running in our eighth year of operation. This year, in September, we turned uh, seven years. Uh, we are startup from Carnegie Mellon University. We are a machine learning based company. And uh, when we started, our main objective, main vision was to revolutionize the user experiences, how users do interact with their smartphone, and revolutionize that whole technology using machine learning. As uh, you can see here, with some of our products, uh, finger sense, ear sense, finger angle, touch tools, we have completely changed the way users interact with their smartphones. And uh, in eight, seven, eight years of operations, we have come a long way uh, with our um, customers. We have sold more than 200 million uh, machine learning licenses. And they are growing as we speak. Um, as I said already, we are a machine learning based company. Our core expertise is uh, definitely machine learning, but then, you know, we also complete the cycle with signal processing, uh, embedded computing, and uh, sensor fusion. In fact, we are one of the world's first companies uh, to uh, commercialize deep learning based uh, machine learning models on smartphones. In uh, recent years, we have won many accolades, uh, Consumer Electronics Show or Mobile World Congress. Some of them are listed here as an example. Um, before I begin to describe uh, the platform product in more detail, um, I would like to describe the genesis of our, our product. Is, as you can see here, when we have started commercializing our uh, machine learning based UX products, finger sense, ear sense, um, we were experiencing, um, for a given model of the phone, about six to eight variants. What I mean here, variants, is that even if I have the same models of smartphones, um, the vendors for the sensors and vendors for different components are different. And that basically, even if I have two smartphones which are exactly the same model, uh, they are different variants because the touch control is coming from different company, touch IC, some software, sensors, microphone, they might be coming from two different vendors. And because they come from two different vendors, they have some different physical properties. And because of that, whenever these sensors uh, react to the environment, they generate different physical signals. And when these signals change, the underlying machine learning problem change. So for us, even though we are doing one or two models of smartphone, but that is different variants, and there are like a slight different variations of the machine learning problem. As you can see here, uh, in the year 2016, uh, 17, 18, and 19, you know, we have seen an exponential growth in the number of variants. You know, we have at one point of time even gone up to like 24 variants for a given model. So which basically says that, okay, if we are doing our machine learning products deployment for that smartphone model, then we are dealing with 24 kinds of slight variations of machine learning problem for the same product. Now, how do we achieve that? You know, um, back then, you know, we used to receive data uh, for our products uh, to build our models. Uh, we do the data quality check. Uh, we remove the spurious data. We do the validations. Uh, build models, build learning curves, and then finally build libraries, and then they're ready for the deployment. These are the typical stages of uh, doing the model building and deployment, and those used to take num days. You can see that with more than 200 million of smartphone-based uh, machine learning solution sold in seven, eight years of operations, and dealing with this many number of variants, this is definitely not scalable. So we innovated our own way of dealing with this problem, and our innovation was to build a machine learning platform, which we could use internally, and we can actually deal with the problem of solving this at scale. So you know, we maintain the same performance, we maintain the same lean and powerful models, but we can then deploy uh, these models at scale using our machine learning platform. And we have been... Uh, adding several features, uh, several different capabilities into our platform since these many years. And now we believe that this platform is basically 
we should be giving an advantage of this platform to unleash the power of machine learning to outside Kixo. So that's where uh, we are coming from. Now, we know um, building a machine learning solution is already a complex problem because um, every application, um, every problem we try to solve, it has uh, its own set of data, its own set of uh, features and different physical properties of the signals involved uh, in them. There are several models to choose from and then there are several uh, parameters for each of these models we need to optimize in order to build commercial grade machine learning solution. When we plug the embedded platforms into this game, this game becomes even more complicated because embedded platforms have uh, limited capabilities in terms of power, in terms of memory, and we want to still maintain the same performance. Everybody wants high performing machine learning models. We want to build models which can fit on the size of those platforms, which are very limited. And uh, we want to make sure that the latencies are uh, up within bounds, you know, they are at the desirable range. So taking care of all these steps, you know, makes building those products at commercial scale even more complex. Kixos machine learning platform for sensor data exactly solves this problem. As you can see here in this artistic visualization, um, there is one stage here where it is collect and you know, upload data. And there is an end stage where basically you know, deploy slash download the library. The platform takes care of all the complex aspects of taking data to the commercial grade machine learning library uh, through the platform backend. So it builds optimized lightweight machine learning library for edge devices, currently supported uh, platform, uh, the currently supported uh, architectures are ARM Cortex M0 through M4 architectures. And it is proven to deliver machine learning solution at scale. We have been using internally for several years and, and, and we have achieved the, the performance, scale, latency, all kind of metrics using, using this particular platform. So here, uh, an expanded view of the platform. If you look at the look at the layer down, you know what it says that these are the user interaction points where users are actually defining the project. For example, classification project. Um, let's say I want to use the accelerometer and gyroscope sensor, and then want to build a gesture recognition uh, application, gesture classification application, which can uh, differentiate between two or three different types of gestures. Then I define that project, I select my sensors then, so I can select sensors and then define my target hardware, which is one of the target hardware's M0 through M4F core architecture. Um, one of our current uh, target hardware, uh, reference hardware is uh, ST's uh, sensatile dot box. And then we can collect uh, slash upload data. I will go to slash upload later, but once we define all these uh, configurations, then I can actually collect the data. So platform allows users to collect the data in real time. So you can collect data for different classes. What upload data does is that if I'm not building these kind of applications where I need to collect the data on the fly real time, but if I have already done my sensors deployments, let's say predictive maintenance problem where I want to recognize whether machine is having any kind of fault or not. So my sensors are deployed and I'm continuously collecting data and all of my data are being stored into a database or into a CSV file um, or whatever other format. Then I can actually also take that data and directly plug it inside the, in, in the platform. So that's the slash upload part is, is coming from. And once that is done, then AutoML ingests this all raw data and then does everything which is shown in the expanded view. So it basically then takes the data it would uh, run the preliminary data quality check uh, and then also does some kind of pre-processing where it would remove like a duplicate data, make sure that the ODRs are consistent, make sure that there are no null values found in the data because all of these things actually make the uh, underlying machine learning problem even difficult or sometimes you know, not possible. So it does data cleaning pre-processing, then it does the feature extraction and selection. So, this is very, very powerful um, feature of the platform. 
because we know that there are like several different kinds of machine learning applications and I am using several different kinds of sensors. All of the applications needs its own set of features and engineering those set of features is extremely time consuming and laborious task. But we need not to worry about that part at all in the platform. Platform would take all the sensor data and then would compute statistical and signal processing based quantities from these signals and then would only use those quantities which are desirable for the given problem. So if my problem is I want to be able to recognize two different gestures, it would select, it would choose features which are most powerful for doing that job versus if I am doing the keyword recognition using microphone data, it would then select different set of features automatically internally without any user intervention. Another thing is that sometimes I know what application I want to build, but I really don't know what sensors I'm going to use for that, right? Let's for the same problem, gesture recognition problem. I know that this is the problem I want to solve, but what if I don't know what sensors to use? And then whatever sensors are given in my platform, I can just select all of them. Because the platform also does the sensor selection internally. So platform would actually, for a given classification problem, would ingest all the sensors data, and then would analyze and make sure that it only uses the sensors which are needed to solve that classification problem. So for gesture recognition problem, for example, even if I am recording temperature sensor data, it wouldn't use temperature data internally. So in the end, it does the sensor selection, then it does the feature selection as well. After doing the feature selection, it would do the model building. So then it would basically build several different types of machine learning model and validate each of the models. For example, it would be logistic regression, boosting machines, random forest, neural networks, deep learning based models, or different implementation of GBM, which is XGBoost. So it would actually build several different types of models. We'll also do the hyperparameter optimization internally within a, within a range. And then all of these model performances are basically shown to the users, which I would go to the next. But from the functionality point of view, then whatever model user wants to see in their end library would actually get converted to C, and then it would basically build the target specific machine learning package. All the C implementation for models here is Kixo proprietary. There is a highly efficient uh, lean implementation done through our several years of embedded computing experience. So we use best of the best from data structures and algorithms to optimize these, uh, all of these implementations. So um, thanks to Tina and Sang here, uh, we have recorded a video which basically shows how to build the uh, machine learning platform based application live using, using this particular platform. So you would see here that we are recording data live using the platform and then we would be actually building a solution and then we will also do the real time classification. So you are seeing here uh, entering the environment name which is something which we can reasonably recognize as a like an, as an environment. Uh, selecting the sensors, accelerometer and gyroscope, then selecting the ODR and the full scale range. And now it is basically flashing the data collection library on the embedded platform. So now it is ready for data collection. Then I am uh, saying that my class label is drums because probably Sang wants to recognize how to play drums. And you can see here now it is initializing. Uh, and then here we are recording the data for playing drum. It would wait for one or two seconds until the data stream is stabilized and then it would basically start recording data for 20 seconds continuously. And then now it is uh, doing pre-processing 
is putting data into the database so that it can be ingested by machine learning building process. The second is Valin, I believe. Yep. And uh, we would be also recording 20 seconds for the Valin. Stabilize, start recording. That's about it. So now you can see all the data collections are listed here. I'm going to start a new training. I can define some model parameters, uh, choose what models I want to build, uh, and then it shows the real-time progress of all the stages involved in uh, building this machine learning package. So you see here the features calculation and, and several other things. We would visit that again. Um, but this is the data visualizer where you can visualize the data uh, which has been just now recorded. Uh, select the sensors for a given class and, and you can visualize and you can see that there is some uh, classifiability already there. This is the data for violin class. And we can see that the data stream looks very different for different classes. And now we can see the models which are in training again, and it is at the training classifier stage. It is building learning curves. Uh, computing latency, so we build a library and then we flash the library on the embedded platform and then pass certain amounts of data to compute the real-time latency. And uh, this is the last stage. You can see it is doing the latency for random forest. And that's it. Now we can see the training results. So you can see the cross-validation performance is here. This is the latency, and this is the library size. You can do deep dive into the results. It would show learning curves, ROC curves, confusion matrix, and you can see here that all of these uh, results are very, very useful in understanding that how the model building is working, uh, what is the performance of my model, do I need to collect more data, or collecting more data will help enhancing the model performance. And, and now it's a time to do the live classification, where Sang is going to do the gestures again, and it would recognize the gestures. So as you can see, that simple gesture classification or, or many of such kind of really useful applications can be built within minutes, actually. OK, so looking at some other aspects of the platform, it has got this data visualization tool, which is very, very powerful. Um, it has got the sensor selection, so you can select sensors and the parameters on which the sensor should be operating right from there. And uh, for models, as you have already seen in the video, you can cross-validation or latency, library size, learning curves, and other kind of reporting you can visualize. Uh, these are the models and training interaction page, so you can actually define uh, how quickly you want to do the, do the prediction. Um, the number of samples basically defines the chunk of data on which I need to run my machine learning models. So that's, again, a user-defined parameters, and there are clear guidelines uh, around it. And then you can um, select the models and then uh, basically start the training. It would show the, show the real-time training progress. We are, uh, we are constantly adding into this feature, so we would be uh, adding more models. Uh, some of the models are being added as I speak right now. Uh, and we are also adding into the 
uh, results basically we are also adding into the analysis so you can see uh, learning curves are right here which are very very helpful which basically tells you that how the performance of the machine learning model is when you keep adding data at regular intervals um, and you can see here that if they are plateauing then you can say that okay you know probably you need to choose different parameters which would be done by the platform anyway or you if you are adding more data you know would more data help um, ROC curves really very helpful you want to see the performance as far as above from that random line um, confusion matrix and again you know we are adding more into these visualizations to help users navigate through different types of machine learning model and which one to choose for into the final library. Uh, these are some of the features, highlights of the platform. Um, it ingests one dimensional and two dimensional data and it ingests the raw data. That is very, very powerful that, you know, I really need not to worry about doing any kind of processing on the data at all. I record, upload raw sensor data and then from there on the platform would basically take over. Um, we have already seen extraction and selection. Another important thing for the deep learning convolutional neural network based model is the quantization. It actually supports the training and testing time quantization both so that it can build really lightweight deep learning based models which can fit onto the embedded platform and which are super fast of course as well. Uh, choice of several machine learning models, we have gone through the list uh, and we are constantly adding more. Um, model compression, so once we generate the C code, uh, we look into these models again, you know, because once the models are built, there are still an opportunity to compress these models without impacting the performance. So we analyze several different parameters of the model. If it is boosting based model, then we analyze the internal tree structure of these boosting based models. Make sure that we only use those ones which are contributing to the model performance and the prediction and we throw away rest of the stuff because sometimes there are parameters which are still sticking in into the model which are not contributing a lot. So we also do in addition to our proprietary implementation which is lean and fast, we also do additional compression on top of that to make sure that you know we save as much space as possible on machine learning so that the embedded platform is available to do rest of the stuff. Um, we develop tunable library. So what I mean is that uh, once we develop these models, these models can be tuned um, by providing additional amounts of data. And there is an ease of integration because what we give is like a library file which can be flashed onto the embedded platform and turns the embedded platform in doing the machine learning compute or can be integrated with other third party applications if there is a need so. Does the target code generation um, out of the box data visualization basically you know all the data is being visualized and our visualizer also is, is undergoing lots and lots of rapid improvements. So we would be adding a lot of other visualization features as well uh, as we go on and uh, one click performance evaluation, you have already seen um, how quickly I can visualize the performance of different models uh, across a range of different uh, parameters. The last one, these are the supported uh, sensors. You can see uh, pretty much the whole variety of sensors are supported. Motions, acoustic, environmental, Touch, touch sensors, we have an extremely great level of expertise dealing with the touch sensors as well. Lots of our products, finger sense, touch tools, ear sense, all of them uh, work with the touch data. Uh, image sensors, so pretty much uh, all of the sensors which are commonly used in building AI, IoT, ML applications for smart environments are currently being supported in the platform and we would be adding support for any other new innovations which are coming out of the census industry as well. 
So with that, I complete.